I had a lot, a lot of differences of opinion with him, but I just loved, you know, he followed his own drumbeat, and I, I had such respect for him because he really was an artist. And uh, we went through an awful lot. And then uh, uh, the genesis of Taxi, his connection with Taxi, w was, was absolutely amazing because he was working at the comedy store. Andy Kaufman, had, you know, he did several uh, Saturday Night Live. In fact, Lorne Michaels, I remember the first year of Saturday Night Live, Lorne Michaels called me, because, and I was started to manage Andy, and uh, he was pitching me. He said, Andy should come back, you know, to do multiple appearances on Saturday Night Live. He said, it's, gonna, it's really going to be a, a good show. The kids are going to like it. He was pitching me. I said, you don't have to pitch me. I said, that's his favorite place to be, you know, is, is on Saturday Night Live. And, uh, you know, so it, it was uh, amazing. So Andy did the, the show on the main room at the Comedy Store. And he had Tony Clifton, which was an alter ego, uh, a, a sort of a, a nasty lounge singer. And he had makeup on whereby nobody would know that it was Andy underneath the, the makeup. It really had a great makeup job with, with a, a body suit. He was a little heavy set, you know, with his tuxedo. And uh, he opened for Andy, at, you know, at the, at the Comedy Store. So uh, Ed Weinberger and Jim Brooks came in uh, with Dave Davis and Stan Daniels because they, they were the four producers of, of Taxi. And they, they saw Andy and they, they want, and they saw Tony Clifton, you know, and they saw Andy and they, and they came over and they said, we just would love to have him to play Latka on Taxi, which was a no-brainer because it was a foreign, you know, mechanic. So I spoke to Andy, and his initial reaction was, uh, I really uh, don't want to do a TV series. I just love, you know, creating material and doing that. That's, you know, what my essence is, is, is to do that. I said, well, these guys are great. They did the Mary Tyler Moore show. They, they're just in incredible uh, pro producers. And uh, he asked if they saw Tony Clifton. I said, yeah, they did see Tony Clifton. And he said, well, if you could make a deal for Tony to do four shows, you know, the, the order was for 22 shows. If you could get Tony to do four shows, and I'll do 14 shows, I'll do it under those circumstances. And then, I, and also, I had, you know, uh, as sophisticated as Jim Brooks and Ed Weinberg were, they did not know that was Andy. I had to tell them that that opening act, Tony Clifton, was Andy Kaufman. And the only way he would do Taxi would be if Tony gets the gig also. So they said uh, they decided to do it. They felt it was worth it, you know, to uh, give Tony four shows. And I had to negotiate a deal with Paramount for two people, you know. And, and I had the backing of, of Brooks and Weinberg, you know. And, uh, uh, I had to negotiate, uh, you know, separate parking places, uh, separate dressing rooms. Andy made considerably more money because he had more exposure from Saturday Night Live. So, <laughs> but I made two distinct contracts. I have the contracts. They're, they're two separate contracts. And then, ta so Taxi, they shoot Andy, Taxi, the first episode, uh, Taxi got rave reviews, uh, and Andy was singled out as, you know, very funny, wonderful. And then it came time to do Tony Clifton for his, his appearance, and he played uh, Danny DeVito's uh, uh, brother, who's a gambler, you know, uh, Louis De Palma's uh, brother, Nick De Palma. He was, you know, sort of a gambler, a ne'er-do-well. So, it, so, so uh, Tony comes to the set in... Uh, he rents a uh, Winnebago, like twice the size of Judd Hirsch's, and he has two bimbos with him, a blonde and a brunette, two hookers, you know. And, and, and he comes to the reading, he says, and he, and he comes to the reading and uh, sits down, and he says, uh, with the girls on each knee, sitting down, I brought my friends with me, I hope you don't mind, and let's ring that, okay, okay. Uh, crap, 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 my line, crap, 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 my line. So anyway, he, he, he started doing the show, and uh, he was drinking Dr Jack Daniels, and, and Andy doesn't drink. But Tony Clifton, he was, uh, you know, sort of a mess. He, I, I got a call. He was late for rehearsals. It was, it was not a pleasant experience, you know, for the producers. So then Ed Weinberger called me and said, George, we, we have to fire Tony Clifton. Not only is his, uh, you know, his behavior terrible, but, but he's not a good actor. So I said, you know, the deal calls for uh, Andy having an out if Tony is uh, let go. So I said, I have to talk to, <laughs> I have to talk to Andy. So I talked to Andy, and Andy said, well, I'll tell you, they could fire Tony only if they do it in front of everybody, you know, because at the run-through, you know, when the Paramount people are there, the network people are there. Also, there was a reporter following Andy around, uh, Bill Nadelseeder, 
for the L L.A. Times. He was doing a story on him and taking pictures and, and writing about Andy, and he was there. And the place was pretty packed, you know, and, and they said he has to go. And Andy said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, I should be here. Start off. Let's go. Let's go. This is good. I'll have a party after the show. So anyway, he was obnoxious, and they, and they had to throw him out. And I, 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 what I did, I audio taped it. I had a little audio tape, and I taped the whole thing with Andy arguing with Ed Weinberger and Judd Hurst saying, you're an idiot, get out of here. And then they called the security guards, and, and they, they, fought, they had to take, get the security guards to throw him out. And, uh, and, they, and then, then the naval seat was taking pictures of all this, and they confiscated his camera. And Bob, Bob Zamuda was there, who's like Andy's writer and producer. And he, he uh, you know, he was in a suit, you know, like uh, an attorney type suit, you know, and everything else. And uh, when they threw Andy out, uh, we got the camera back. Was, uh, Zamuda went over to the security guard and he said, I'll take that like he was like the head of security or something. He gave him the camera. And I got, I smuggled the camera out of the studio, but they threw him out screaming. And uh, then I met Andy afterwards around the corner at a restaurant, and he was so excited. He said, George, this is like the best day of my life. This is comedy of the street. This is what I love. And it made headlines across the country, and, and, and Nato Cedar had the pictures of him being tossed out. I have, still have the pictures and, uh, and the story. He's being tossed out by three security guards, and, and they wouldn't let him stop by the Winnebago. They wouldn't let him get his girls. They just threw him off the lot. And then I smuggled the camera out of the lot in, in one of those, uh, you know, wardrobe pushcart things, you know, and I got out. And, it, and he loved it. This is one of the triumphs of his life. Yeah, I wasn't afraid. Yeah. I, was having, I was having fun. I knew it was like an incredible experience. And he was, and he was very talented, and he still, Andy Kaufman wasn't hurt that bad. He was still, still on taxi, you know. He came back the next week, and, and, uh, and the guys, uh, you know, were telling about t Tony, you know, you know, t Tony Danza were telling about Tony Clifton and Mary Lou Henna and Judd Hirsch and Danny DeVito. And they were watching a, a tape of, 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 of Tony Clifton. He said, well, that guy's such an asshole, he said, you know, Andy. And he went on, he did a show, he stayed on taxi for five years. <laughs>